The Amazon rainforest fires have rightfully gathered global attention. This is a video on why we must care and how we can act to mitigate this issue. Since January of this year, the Amazon rainforest has faced about 75,000 fires, and this has worsened in the past three weeks, although there's some relief now. Fires happen every single year in the tropics. They're not new. The problem is that the frequency and the intensity of the fires is increasing. The recent fires in the Amazon rainforest represent an 85% increase since last year, and things may just get worse in the coming years if we don't act now. The forest is being burnt. Hi, my name is Ankur Shah and welcome to my YouTube channel. I make videos on environmental and cultural issues with a focus on how we can leave the world better than we found it. The reason why I made this video is because the Amazon has shaped my beliefs and who I am today in many ways. In 2017, I had the chance to visit this majestic rainforest and experience her beauty. This was an absolutely life-changing experience for me and I want every single one of you to go there at least once in your lifetime. Seeing the forest burn like this makes me feel helpless. So creating this video is a duty of mine and a hopeful contribution. In this video, we will learn how we are all connected to the Amazon in many ways and how we can help prevent such catastrophes in the future. Everything in this world is connected in ways we can and can't see. Here's how the Amazon affects us all. The first thing is carbon storage. Tropical rainforests store about two and a half billion tons of carbon. Clearing the Amazon rainforest will release a lot of the stored carbon leading to further temperature increase as if we need more of that. Forests help us mitigate climate change to an extent. Burning the Amazon rainforest, first of all, it's a bad idea, but it has significantly increased carbon monoxide emissions which endanger health of the people and other species. The second thing is rainfall. Trees release water vapor in a process called evapotranspiration, which eventually creates clouds. The rainforest creates its own rainfall. Since water has a high specific heat capacity, it also absorbs a lot of the heat in the atmosphere. So the Amazon has a great cooling effect. It's estimated that 70% of South America's GDP is produced in areas that receive rainfall or water from the Amazon. These important services are called ecosystem services, which nature provides to humans for free. Third important thing is biodiversity. The Amazon is home to millions of plants and animals. It houses about 10% of the world's biodiversity. Each unique species has its own ecological role and contributes to ecosystem services, which people depend on. Biodiversity makes the Amazon resilient to change and all species are crucial to the functioning of the rainforest. Most importantly, the Amazon is home to 1 million indigenous people and about 400 tribes, each with their own unique language and culture. Now I lived with the Sequoia tribe in the Ecuadorian Amazon for two weeks and that experience made me realize how crucial the rainforest is for humanity. Many of the Amazon tribes identify with the rainforest and have infused sacred worship and rituals into elements of nature. They realize that they are a part of nature and protecting the earth means protecting themselves. Here's a map from Global Forest Watch to show exactly what I mean. Here's a map of Brazil and I'm gonna zoom in once to see the names of the indigenous territories, but we don't really know the extent. So I click on land use and go down and switch on the layer called land rights. And what I see is the extent of the indigenous territories in Brazil. Now I want to figure out how to see the tree cover loss in and around the indigenous territories. So I click on the layer called tree cover loss and switch that layer on. We can see there's a lot of deforestation around these territories, mainly to do farming and possibly road building. But when I switch off the land rights layer, I go and switch it off and we can see that the places where the tree cover loss is minimal are the same places where the indigenous land rights are protected. This is absolutely evidence that they are the best conservationists of their land. Indigenous peoples all over the world constitute only about 5% of the global population, but they protect 80% of the biodiversity in their lands. They are masters of their ecology and their surroundings because they know each and every plant and animal intimately. They've built relationships with them because they depend directly on them. In our urban societies, modern societies, do we even know where our food comes from or how it's been grown? I know I, I probably don't. These forest cultures provide different answers to the question, what does it mean to be human and alive? The tribal people of the Amazon are examples of how humans can live in harmony with nature, unlike us modern and civilized people. We must learn from them for a sustainable path into our collective human future. 
The Amazon is a medicinal warehouse. With about 16,000 tree species, there are thousands of medicinal plants in the rainforest. An estimate states that 25% of all pharmaceuticals have at least one plant ingredient. One of the most fascinating and potent medicines found here is ayahuasca, which translates to vine of the soul. Most of the forest tribes have independently developed their way of consuming ayahuasca in long ceremonies. Ayahuasca is considered extremely sacred and has extensive protocols to consume it. During the ceremonies, the participants can receive visions of alternate realities and they undergo serious introspection that allows them to learn more about themselves. I've done that myself, so I speak from experience. There have been numerous cases of depression being cured by ayahuasca, but it requires the right setting and the right shamans with the right intentions. We do not fully understand the medicinal potential of the Amazon, and yet we're destroying what could possibly save us. This is a 100-year-old shaman named Don Cesario who I met during my stay there. He conducted two ayahuasca ceremonies which altered my consciousness and showed me new realities. Elder shamans like him are passing away and no one wants to follow that life path. So they take away libraries of spiritual and ecological knowledge with them and modernity is accelerating this loss. Cultural loss translates to environmental loss in the Amazon. If the Amazon is gone, we would lose centuries of traditional shamanic knowledge which has been passed down orally and that really holds the key to elevating human consciousness. Now the deforestation of the rainforest has been going on for several decades, mainly due to cattle farming, illegal logging, building roads, mining, palm oil plantations, and oil drilling. Until 2017, the net deforestation was actually decreasing compared to the 90s, which was great news. But now the trend is reversing, which is what we want to reverse again. The Amazon has reduced in size by about 17% since the 1970s, when the satellite measurements began. This is dangerous because recent research suggests that the tipping point is 20 to 25% of deforestation. A tipping point is a threshold beyond which there's no return. Imagine this bottle. If I tip it, it'll come back. But if I tip it beyond a certain limit, it just goes, and there's no control. Past the tipping point, the rainforest will become drier and drier and turn into a savanna or a grassland with few trees, and in the process drastically reduce rainfall and emit more carbon. The only silver lining I see from the Amazon rainforest fires is that the whole world finally seems to be paying attention. Why does it take a crisis for us to care? These fires have largely been caused by people wanting to clear forests for agricultural land, especially cattle ranching. Now most of them are people just trying to make a living and meet the needs of their families. The world's biggest meat company called JBS is responsible for much of this deforestation and they employ people who tend to think in the short term because they do not have the luxury of thinking in the long term or thinking globally. Brazil has about two thirds of the Amazon rainforest and it has a global responsibility and world leaders must help in preserving the Amazon as much as possible. Let's meet a Brazilian friend of mine who conducts research on deforestation in the Amazon to understand her perspectives. All right, so uh, when you were living in Brazil, in Rio, how was your experience? Was there any fight between the government and the indigenous people? Yes, uh, so from my experience, uh, indigenous people have always uh, battled for their land rights. And I think that with the previous government was moving forward in a good way. Uh, they have their lands uh, regulated and everything. But with the new government, I think that's kind of backlashing right now. What is your opinion of uh, Bolsonaro? He thinks of the Amazon as a possession, something to be um, explored, consumed, instead of cherished and nurtured. Hmm. And I think that's kind of dangerous, not only for us Brazilians, but you know, for the entire planet. Bolsonaro blamed NGOs for the fires and was even hesitant to accept help from global leaders during the G7 summit. But simply blaming him for this destruction is not going to take us anywhere. He's a reflection of our modern society that does not place an inherent value in nature, unlike the indigenous tribes in the rainforest. Our ideas of development and progress involve infinite growth of GDP, continuous profits, and often lead to environmental destruction. We live in a world where burning the rainforest is profitable. We need systemic and cultural changes that automatically protect and recognize the rights of the Amazon instead of destroying it for purely economic reasons. These fires are just another example of a drastic market failure 
where our current capitalistic model does not take our dependence on the environment into account. I should say I'm very skeptical of policy solutions which force people to behave in a certain way. We need sustainable alternatives to slash and burn agriculture, mining, and oil drilling, but which provide income for the local populations and protect the environment. I will talk about some of these ideas in another video. Until that happens, here's how we all can help preserve the Amazon for our future generations. The first thing is stop or at least reduce eating beef which is exported from Brazil. About 80% of all deforestation in the Amazon is due to raising cattle for exporting beef. This is the single largest cause of deforestation in the Amazon. If you really want to eat steak or eat a hamburger, then consider buying local beef, ethically raised meat, or raise your own cows. Individual actions will add up collectively and really make a difference. Secondly, buy food products such as tea, coffee, or chocolate, which are certified by the Rainforest Alliance. This is an organization that ensures sustainable business practices in the tropics and makes sure that food is ethically grown with proper labor practices. Third is to boycott palm oil products which are not certified. Palm oil plantations are quickly replacing the rainforest not only in the Amazon but also in Indonesia and tropical forests in general. My way of doing this is simply avoiding packaged processed junk foods as much as I can. Number four is to download and use the free web search engine called Ecosia which plants one tree for every 50 searches you do. The search results are the same as Google so don't worry about that. The action links are in the description below. Consider donating to reliable organizations. Charity Navigator is a website which rates NGOs based on their impact and transparency. I am not endorsing any particular NGOs and I am not receiving any money from anybody for making this video. But I have been following some great organizations which include Amazon Conservation, Amazon Watch, Pachamama Alliance, and Rainforest Action Network among many. They have a rating of either 3 or 4 out of 4 stars as shown here and you can choose to support them. Sign up for at least one organization's email list to stay updated on the Amazon. Again, the links to each of these are in the description below. Lastly, please talk about the importance of preserving the Amazon rainforest with your friends and family. All of the article links and action links are in the video description below, so please check it out. Thank you so much for watching this video. It really means a lot to me, and I'd love to see your thoughts in the comments below. If you found this video useful or learned something new, then please share it with your community and hit that subscribe button below for more videos on environmental topics. We can all make a difference and we need to care for our earth because after all, we only have one mother. Thank you so much again and I'll see you next time.